Hi, so I've been playing around with some mechanical tools lately, trying to learn a little bit more about HVAC design, um, what they go through, and really just how it all works. So in that, I found some tools in Revit that might be useful to other mechanical engineers out there, or mechanical engineers, since I'm an electrical engineer, just trying to learn uh, something about mechanical engineering and how to do really load calculations and what goes into creating load calculations and then you know sizing ductwork, um, airflows, all that kind of stuff. So within Revit, um, you got to create zones. So this is a zone or a space. So you create spaces within Revit. Uh, you can create zones as well for um, any of your HVAC types. So if you need like to zone um, some air handlers or anything like that, you can do that within Revit as well. But create these spaces, they need to encompass the entire space. So you might need to adjust these up um, really to the, the ceiling plane so that they encompass everything um, so that you're getting the right thing for this heating and cooling loads. So then once all that's done throughout the model, you'll go to this heating and cooling loads under the analyze tab, and then it'll bring up this dialog. Um, in this dialog, you can see there's a bunch of green stuff. These are all the spaces that are created within your model. Um, now all this, I don't know exactly how um, a lot of this gets put together. I'm still learning it, um, but thought this would be useful uh, to show. So you have your building type, you have your location, uh, that's where I am. Um, your ground plane, make sure that, you know, if you have a below grade, uh, like a basement, that you make sure that this is your actual ground plane. Um, project phase, new construction. So this will encompass anything that's under the phase of new construction within Revit. So um, you might want to do an existing uh, load calculation for what was previous and then new. Um, so again, you have all these different uh, choices to make for it. And then under details, come here under spaces. And um, so for the reason this is called like one space is that's the space number and then the space name and they just default to space. So you want to make sure that your space name and room name are equal. I think there's some tools out there to make your space names match your room names. Uh, there's a few that I've gone and done this by hand. Then you'll come in here and choose your space type. Um, the building type, that, there's a lot of this that's default, but you will you can change this for uh, whatever your building um, construction type is. So any of the U values uh, effectively that you want to put in for that. Uh, shading factors, you can change some of these um, like people loading numbers. Um, all that kind of stuff, lighting loads, uh, one watt per square foot as an electrical engineer, that's pretty good. Um, so if you do one, one watt a square foot, um, that's pretty typical anymore. Some might be less than that. But anyway, so we go through all that, you'll hit calculate. Um, these values I know are probably not gonna be right. Um, I just haven't gone through all of it, but wanted to show the tool um, two other engineers to say that this is possible while setting it up might be uh, a little bit burdensome because the model's already created and you don't have to recreate it like you do in I think in train and eQuest where you have to basically there might be some exports from Revit that allow you to speed things up um, but this might be a, a simple way to do it and because it's in Revit you don't have to continually export and change um, any of the geometry that's done or that you've done in train or eQuest or some other modeling tool. So nice that Revit's starting to incorporate these things and I thought I would share that with you. So we hit calculate, it goes through, it's gonna go through all the months to you know make sure that we're looking at peak heating and cooling loads um, so that everything is sized correctly for those peak times. So then you get this uh, project report. Again, probably not right, but gives you an idea of what the output is. So you get your building type, your total building square feet, volume of the building, all of the main stuff. It'll break it down by floor. And then you get some zones. Granted, the whole building is a zone. Um, 
all the cooling components, heating components, what those look like, um, and then it'll break it down by space, give you you know area volume, peak heating, and cooling loads, both in BTUs per hour and CFM. So really, I think a pretty good tool. Um, obviously, there's more work to do than uh, the simple little overview that I've done just to show you what the output is, uh, but definitely a very powerful tool in Revit. So hope you enjoyed.